my field, that is macrobiology. But uh, you have to be happy because uh, I just uh, managed to, to bring the sun with me. So <laughs> this is a very nice uh, day. I, I was here 20 years ago, something like that. And uh, it wasn't that, that beautiful <laughs> as, as, as it is today. A very nice uh, Saturday. So um, I will talk, like I said, about uh, the basis and the basics of CRISPR technology. I was asked to talk about technology, but uh, I will spend most of the time talking about uh, the, the native systems. So uh, this is the one. It's coming, this one? Mm -hmm. So let's try. Is this one just uh, okay. the presentation? Probably not. You may need to do it with the... Okay, no problem. Sorry. If it works, it works. Yes. Now it's working. So uh, I will talk, like I said, uh, as, uh, about the, this initially, about these uh, native crispr cas systems that they are present in prokaryotes, exclusively in prokaryotes, even though in some plasmids of Vitsia fava, uh, ava commun, the common bean, uh, some plasmids carry some uh, repeats very similar to the CRISPR, and probably there are remnants of an ancient uh, CRISPR system. But uh, uh, complete CRISPR systems have been only found in, in prokaryotes, both in archaea and bacteria. And uh, uh, they are encoded in chromosomes, but also in plasmids. And uh, recently, uh, complete and functional CRISPR-Cas systems have been also uh, identified in phages, that is, uh, viruses that infect bacteria. So uh, the, the, the primary element of the uh, CRISPR systems are, of course, the CRISPR. Uh, CRISPR are uh, s a small repeats, very short repeats, the DNA direct repeats that contain each, each of them uh, inverted repeats. So th they are partially palindromic, and they are usually arranged in clusters uh, where uh, the, the, the repeats are located at a fixed distance one uh, from the other. So they are, they are regularly interspaced by spacers, and spacers uh, have a, a length similar to the uh, that of the repeats, that is between about 30 and 50 uh, base pair. And next to the, this CRISPR spacer arrays, there is a, a leader region. This is an 80 rich region, usually between 100 and 500 base pair long. And uh, next to this CRISPR uh, arrays, you will find between 3 and 33 genes that are uh, uh, functionally associated to this uh, CRISPR. These genes are called CAS for, CAS, uh, uh, for, for CRISPR associated sequences. So I, uh, I will talk a bit about the, the, the history of the CRISPR uh, field. Uh, uh, like Nerea mentioned before, uh, this uh, paper appeared uh, soon, uh, uh, I think in January, in January last year, and they, they claim that uh, everything began in, in, in Alicante. So, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <coughs> Maybe he's, he's right, but uh, I, I will uh, give you my, my opinion about that. <laughs> so uh, in 1992, I was working in my PhD thesis at the University of Alicante. And uh, the only thing we wanted to know is uh, how is possible that these uh, halophilic archaea, these uh, cell-loving organisms, are able to grow at, for instance, 10% salinity and also to 30% uh, uh, salinity, that is uh, up to saturation of sodium chloride. So uh, we, we tried to, uh, to uh, sequence uh, uh, regions that were apparently involved in adaptation to this uh, salinity. Uh, these this were all times, of course, uh, nothing related to the sequencing. Uh, nowadays, uh, it, it was very hard work just to get uh, 200 base pairs of nice sequence. And uh, this is one of the first sequences we managed to, to obtain at the University of uh, Alicante. And suddenly we saw that uh, some something very peculiar that this was uh, the repetition of a uh, 30 base pair sequence at regular distances. Of course, we were convinced that that was an artifact. And we, we were very sad because uh, uh, we usually were not able to read uh, these, these sequences. And one of the few uh, sequences that were uh, readable uh, has some, something very weird. This is not possible. So the same sequence repeated many times at regular distances. But we repeated the experiment and eventually we confirmed that these uh, microorganisms harbor these uh, regularly spaced uh, repeats. 
so this uh, this gel is uh, nowadays an icon of uh, the, the the CRISPR field, but was not the first description of CRISPR. So in, uh, we just uh, 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 look at the published literature and uh, found that in 1987, a Japanese group have uh, uh, reported some uh, similarly arranged sequences, not uh, related in terms of sequencing itself, but uh, about uh, more or less of the same length of uh, the repeats we found, and also regularly spaced. So we thought that perhaps these uh, sequences were related. Probably they were uh, the, the same uh, kind of uh, repeat sequences. But what was very bizarre, because in, uh, if you look at this uh, uh, phylogenetic tree, uh, we are here. These are the fungi, and the, the phylogenetic distance is very short. But if you compare the phylo phylogenetic distance between the proteobacteria, where the E. coli belongs, and the cell lower uh, organisms, where we found the repeats, is a huge one. <coughs> and also, the, uh, the, these microorganisms are inhabitants of, of completely different environments. So uh, these repeats were not related to adaptation to salinity, as we uh, thought initially, probably the genes that were around the repeats were related, but not the repeats than, than, themselves. And uh, uh, also, uh, it was evident for us that this was an, uh, an ancient uh, uh, feature. So probably uh, the, 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 the repeats were present in all the prokaryotes. So in the, uh, this, this paper that uh, described the f the, for the first time the repeats of uh, archaea uh, was published in 1993, and there we uh, analyzed the transcription of this region. Uh, like I said, this, uh, these uh, genes were transcribed, of course, and uh, uh, different salinities, and we obtained single bands in northern blots. But however, when we used these probes from the, the uh, repeat region, the, that was located in a non-coding region, we obtained, instead of a single band, uh, a population of, of, of bands. And uh, in fact, we call them the, the, the blood bands uh, that uh, were uh, suggesting that these RNAs derived from the CRISPR region were uh, highly processed. Then uh, we, we try to uh, know, at least to, to, uh, to to get some phenotype uh, after manipulation of the repeats. And with this very simple experiment, we just transform these uh, halophilic organisms with plasmids, recombinant plasmids, carrying a copy of the uh, a fragment of the repeats also present in the chromosome. And we expected to see something, and we saw the best phenotype you can, uh, you can expect, that is just uh, that, that the cells died. So that there was a, a, a reduction in the viability of these uh, cells carrying these recombinant plasmids. And also, there was a, an increase in the ratio of plasmid versus chromosome in these uh, in these uh, cultures. And more important, even when we stay with DAPI, these cultures, we obtain a large proportion of cells that were poorly stained. So all these results were compatible with the laws of the chromosome. And they were suggesting that were, it was some sort of uh, interference related to the presence of the CRISPR in these uh, multicopy plasmids. <coughs> so afterwards, we tried to, uh, to find uh, some proteins that could bind to these repeats. Uh, as I said before, they, they are palindromic, and uh, uh, probably they, they may form these uh, uh, stem loops structures regularly into space. So may maybe this, uh, these were just the, the recognition for some protein or some structure at the level of uh, the membrane. We didn't find any protein that binds to, to the, the, the CRISPR and the DNA. Nowadays, still only uh, one case of uh, in sulfolous, I think, uh, has been identified a protein that binds to these uh, sequences, but not in any other organism. Also, we performed some topological studies. Uh, we were convinced that this uh, just uh, biased uh, by my, my experience. I, I was working uh, on topology in like the early 90s, so I, I, I was sure that this probably will, will affect the, the topology and the structure of the chromosome. We were wrong. We tried uh, some experiments, and uh, in any case, we, we found any, any effect of 
topology or super calling or on the formation of these structures or, or just the other way around. So, uh, meanwhile, uh, something happened in 1995. I remember that was the year I was uh, in my involved in my postdoc in at the University of Oxford, and my my boss uh, one day in 1995 just gathered all all the the members of the lab. And, and said, I have something to announce, and this is really important, and it's going to change uh, the way we do research right now. And he said, uh, a paper has appeared with the first complete genome of a free living organism. And we said, OK, uh, we come back to work. Okay. <laughs> 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 Probably you are right that we have too many things to do, and we, are, we don't think that's so important. It was really important. So after that, uh, this, this was the first in 1995, and after that, many other uh, complete uh, genomes of uh, prokaryotes, of archaea and bacteria, were uh, released, and uh, uh, at the same time, uh, similarly arranged repeats to those that we described previously in archaea and had been uh, observed also in E. coli, were also identified. Uh, and by the end of the 90s, there were 20 complete genomes of prokaryotes. Now there are 3,000 or something like that, several thousand, and many more uh, draft genomes. So at that moment, with only 20 complete genomes and partial sequences, we look for, for repeats, resembling these repeats of uh, uh, haloferax, and found that uh, indeed, as we uh, expected, they, they were uh, present in many of them, not, not, not in, in all of them, but uh, in in about 50 percent of bacteria and uh, the vast majority of, uh, of archaea. Then after the, the common features of these uh, sequences, we describe for the first time a family of repeats that we call short regularly spaced uh, repeats. All of them were partially palindromic. Now we know that there are some uh, repeats, canonical CRISPR repeats that are not uh, palindromic at all. <coughs> That was in 2000, and in 2001, uh, this guy, uh, Ruth Johnson, uh, sent me an email to tell me that they have just found uh, four genes that were invariably next to the, the repeats of uh, many uh, microorganisms. And they wanted to give a name to these uh, sequences. And uh, he didn't like SRSR. I really loved SRSR. <laughs> it's hard to pronounce, probably, but uh, uh, you think about that. It's Spacer repeat, spacer repeat. It's just wonderful. It's just that I think it was a great idea, SRSR, but uh, uh, he was not convinced about that. And uh, uh, he wanted, uh, see, he asked me about the possibility of changing that name. So I suggested CRISPR. I came back home <laughs> that day. I, I knew that uh, something was going on there. And I said, I shouldn't say yes, but uh, anyway, um, probably if I don't give, I, I don't change the name. This guy is going to uh, rename the, the family, and he's going to describe the, the, the gene. So probably the, the name he decides is going to be the one that will, will be considered and maintained. So they s he said he wanted to call them spiders. I said, don't do that. So <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I, I came back home. I told my wife, uh, what do you think about CRISPR? And she said, wonderful name for a dog. I really <laughs> like it. <laughs> And uh, she's not related to science at all. And, uh, uh, and OK, uh, I proposed CRISPR. And they, as you see here, they were very happy with the, this uh, possibility, probably because uh, it, the C at the beginning was a, a good beginning also for the, the genes, CAS, CRISPR, associated genes. So we agreed to, to uh, use this uh, acronym in our future publications. And the first paper where you will see CRISPR is uh, in this paper that was already submitted to publication when we were talking about the, the acronym, this 2002 paper by Janssen and collaborators where they f um, described four genes, the, the Cas1, 2, 3, and 4 genes associated, apparently associated uh, to, the, to the CRISPR uh, arrays. So instead of four, uh, just uh, two years later, 45 different protein uh, 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 families related to CRISPR were 
were uh, described and identified. And uh, uh, as you can see here, depending on the organism, you will find just uh, a few genes associated to the repeats, or in some cases, up to uh, 33 different genes. And the, the, the identity, of course, of these genes was very different depending on the organism, and this allowed for uh, uh, the first classification of uh, CRISPR systems in uh, nine sub subtypes at that time. So we lo you look uh, impossible to read here, but this uh, Streptococcus pyogenes SF370 has uh, two systems. One of uh, these systems uh, only have uh, four genes. One of them is a very large one, CSN1, uh, nowadays known as Cas9, that probably you heard talking about that. So uh, this is uh, all uh, what I told you, just uh, all the publications from 1987 to 2004. And uh, there were just a few more uh, publications related to the use of the, the repeats uh, of microbacterium for uh, typing purposes. And uh, uh, but the, the, the situation really changed in after 2005. And the reason for that, I I like to, uh, to think that uh, uh, probably is uh, that, uh, uh, that that year we published uh, uh, this paper uh, revealing the origin of the spacers until then uh, unknown. And uh, 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 we, in fact, we thought for many years that the spacers were generated in OVO. Uh, during the duplication of the CRISPR. But anyway, we were trying to look for sequences matching those spacers in databases, but databases were very small at that time. And suddenly, in 2003, uh, we were sequencing uh, E. coli strains, and suddenly we found that one of the spacers was identical to the sequence of the phage P1 that infects E. coli, but not that particular strain. So wow, this looks good. And after that, we look uh, for uh, CRISPR arrays in all the, the, the sequences in databases using a, a homemade uh, program and uh, analyze all spacers uh, uh, looking for uh, sequences matching those spacers in non-CRISPR loci and found that 2% uh, of them were identical or almost identical to sequences elsewhere. And the vast majority were located in phages, but also some of them were in plasmids and uh, apparently in, uh, in sequences, chromosomal sequences, not related to, to mobility. One of these guys uh, revealing homology to sp uh, of spacers to uh, other sequences was Streptococcus pyogenes SF370. And this is very peculiar because uh, eight out of nine spacers match a sequence in uh, in databases, and these sequences were, in uh, in all cases, uh, uh, present in the chromosome of other Streptococcus pyogenes strains, and in particular, they were in prophages sequences. That is, phages that are integrated in the in the genome of these other strains. So, these other strains didn't have any CRISPR-Cas system. And uh, also we check with other, uh, all the other uh, s uh, species or strains where we found uh, sequences matching the spacers. And in all cases, spacers were uh, similar or identical to sequences located in genetic elements that were able to infect members of the same taxonomic group where the, the spacer, the corresponding spacer carrier strains uh, belong. So this, this really looks like uh, the spacers uh, were not uh, synthesized in OVO. They, they derive from pre-existent sequences that uh, we know now as protospacers. During infection by viruses or the infection by a plasmid, this system takes pieces of the invader and uh, uh, introduce these sequences, these uh, fragments of sequence in a CRISPR array. Then also uh, uh, looking at the literature, we found that there was no report uh, on the efficient infection of these genetic elements carrying protospacers in the strain containing the corresponding matching spacer. And moreover, the, the genetic elements carrying protospacers were not present in the same cell with the corresponding spacer matching sequence. And uh, only uh, in some cases, these uh, uh, protospacer carrier elements were integrated in the genome, but in, in, do in those 
few cases, the sequence matching the spaces uh, was uh, highly degenerated. So it was evident that there was, uh, that there was some incompatibility between spacer and protospacers in the same cell. And after that, uh, we proposed that uh, we, we were dealing with uh, an RNA guide acquired immunity system. So we proposed that th that was an immunity system, and also uh, taking into account that some spacers match sequences apparently not related to mobility, perhaps it was some uh, more general or versatile regulatory system. And also uh, proposed that the, this, uh, this immunity was guided by the CRISPR RNA uh, sequences we detected uh, many years before in, uh, in, in Halophyrax. Only three years after that, these this guys uh, uh, demonstrated that uh, when you uh, have a strain of a Streptococcus thermophilus mixed with a virus for which the, the strain is initially sensitive, uh, only a few cells survive. You sample these uh, cells, you look for the CRISPR arrays, and they have obtained at least one new spacer. And these new spacers were identical to a sequence of the fates. And after that, these uh, strains became resistant to infection. That was wonderful. I really love this paper. It was fantastic because it was also the first time that uh, the, the uh, functionality of the, the relation between the, the, the Cas genes and the, these CRISPR arrays was demonstrated. So, uh, of course, that uh, the, the lack of interest until then uh, uh, changed it, uh, suddenly. And many people were uh, uh, getting very nervous with the idea that prokaryotes have an adaptive immune system. That, that's great. That, that's amazing. Now we know that, but at that moment, no one could imagine that uh, prokaryotes had such, such an interesting system. NASA was interested in, in CRISPR, and uh, uh, in, in 2008, uh, Jim Balfield uh, convened a, a, a meeting in Berkeley. We were 10 speakers. Uh, only three of us had published uh, something on, uh, on CRISPR. And uh, the others, uh, this guy, John Van der Roost, presented a, a very nice talk when, uh, where he identified the, uh, <coughs> the uh, RNA, the CRISPR RNAs uh, molecules derived from the CRISPR arrays as the guides of the system. Each of these CRISPR RNAs are made of spacer sequence and fragments of the digestion repeats. In that uh, meeting, I presented uh, 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 the, the protospacer adjacent motifs that initially I call a, a joining, but uh, during the meeting, someone convinced me to, move, uh, to change a joining by adjacent, and uh, I proposed this uh, PAMS uh, term just to define some conserved motifs that were present in the sequence matching those spacers, that is, next to the protospacers <laughs> that will be the, 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 the putative targets also of the interference. We also suggested that these this, uh, uh, motifs were important for, uh, for the interference, for the recognition of the target. And uh, uh, I, this, I, I just found this yesterday. That's the reason I told you just to change <laughs> the presentation. Because just looking at this paper, <laughs> I, I, I saw something that uh, I, I, I didn't remember. Uh, I, I just said the PANS will have to be considered in the development of the expected applications of the CRISPR system as an innovative molecular biology tool. I'm talking in 2009. Wow. <laughs> uh, that was great. So uh, at that moment, we, we knew that they could be applied in, in biotechnology, in macrobiology, but I don't know why I got this idea. We had too many beers at that, uh, that, uh, that moment. I don't know. Anyway, in uh, the next, the, the, the year on, Sylvain Moineau from the Laval University uh, really showed that uh, the, the, the PAMs are absolutely necessary for the immunity effect, and, and more important, uh, this, uh, the nature of this immunity was just target cleavage. So CRISPR are RNA guide uh, restriction systems. And uh, uh, in 2011, uh, uh, Emmanuel Charpentier entered the picture of CRISPR. And she defined the uh, tracer RNA encode very close from the CRISPR arrays of a particular type of CRISPR Cas systems. This uh, tracer RNA was absolutely necessary for the generation of the CRISPR RNA guides. 
Okay. So after that, uh, 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 many people joined the, 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 the CRISPR team, and um, people mainly involved in biochemistry, genetics, and microbiology in general. Uh, all of these people was uh, really uh, interested just in knowing how could be achieved this immunity, with which was the mechanism of this immunity. And thanks to the hard work of all these people, uh, we could depict a general picture of the CRISPR uh, mechanism that uh, is uh, uh, organized or in, in three stages, adaptation, expression, and interference. During adaptation, Cas1 <coughs> and Cas2, which are the only Cas genes that are present in all functional CRISPR Cas systems, these uh, two proteins collaborate to recognize a PAM initially and afterwards to take a piece of the DNA next to the PAM and integrate this uh, fragment of DNA at the uh, leader proximal end of the CRISPR array in a process that involves the duplication of the, the, the repeat. During expression, uh, the, uh, the CRISPR array is transcribed from a promoter located at the leader, and uh, uh, immediately after this, uh, this transcription, the uh, usually Cas proteins, uh, in some cases, in collaboration with other RNAs, just process this uh, RNA, uh, producing the, the guys RNA that, that, that was exactly what we saw uh, in 1993. Uh, the generation of a population derived from these uh, uh, pre, pre CRISPR RNAs. So, these uh, proteins, these Cas proteins that participate in the generation of the CRISPR RNAs uh, remain bound to the CRISPR uh, part of the CRISPR uh, RNA molecule and uh, they, they recognize a PAM, they look for PAMs initially, and when they found, find a, a PAM, they interrogate the adjacent sequence for uh, matching with the spacer region of the CRISPR array. And in the case matching is good enough, the, the uh, Cas endonuclease will cleave that uh, target. And in the case this, is, uh, this uh, target is an invader, indeed the CRISPR-Cas system behaves as uh, an acquired immunity system. But this is, this is not the, the only role of CRISPR-Cas. We know now that they play all the roles. In, in some cases, uh, just CRISPR or just Cas genes or together CRISPR and, and Cas. Most of these roles are related to gene regulation or DNA uh, repair. I'm not going to get into this because uh, we don't have time. But uh, I, I, I think it's uh, important to, to uh, take into account that we are not talking about a, a, a CRISPR Cas system. There are many CRISPR systems, and there is a huge diversity of uh, systems uh, that differ in the identity of the associated Cas genes. There are two classes, class 1 and class 2, six types and many subtypes wi within each of, of these systems. If you look at this uh, image, uh, uh, these are the, the proteins involved in uh, each of the stages of CRISPR action. Expression, no much difference. Adaptation, no much difference. But uh, there's a huge difference at the level of interference. And as a consequence of that, there are peculiarities uh, at the level of the interference uh, state in the mechanism. So for instance, uh, the tray CRISPR RNA described by Emmanuel is not only necessary for the processing and generation of the CRISPR RNA, but also for interference. The CRISPR RNA molecule uh, uh, hybridized with the tray CRISPR RNA uh, molecule, and uh, uh, after that, the, 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 the Cas endonuclease will be activated and uh, will uh, efficiently cleave the target, otherwise, will not cleave that target. But the vast majority of systems do not require a track CRISPR RNA or tracer RNA. Most CRISPR Cas systems recognize and cleave uh, uh, DNA. However, there are other systems that only recognize and cleave RNAs, and uh, uh, type 3 systems uh, cleave RNA and after that uh, cleave the, uh, the DNA encoding that RNA. PAMs have been identified in many systems, or like uh, type 3 and type 6 systems, do not have uh, canonical PAMs, okay? But they, they, there is some sort of uh, motif uh, also necessary for, for interference. And as far as we know, uh, the, those uh, uh, systems pertaining to class 1 
cleave many times the target. They produce nicks, many nicks uh, in the in the target. However, class two produce just a single uh, uh, cleavage, a double strand cleavage, just once, and that's it. This is uh, quite important for the applications, as, as we will see later. But the, the main, uh, uh, the most important difference between class one and class two, that is in fact the reason why we propose this classification in two, class, in two classes, is that class one for interference rely on a complex, uh, what is called a vector complex made of several proteins, several copies of each of them, apart from the uh, cas endonuclease. But however, class two rely only in one protein. That in the case of type two systems is uh, Cas9. So it's quite much more simple, so more uh, more uh, uh, interesting for for uh, applications, at least in heterologous hosts. So talking about uh, applications, first in the in the natural host that, that is in, in prokaryotes, in bacteria or archaea, uh, as I mentioned before, in the, in the case of microbacterium tuberculosis, uh, the the these uh, spacers, the, the diversity of spacers, depending on the strain, different isolates of microbacterium have a different content of spacers. This can be used and has been used for 1983 for typing purposes, for epi epi epidemiological studies of microbacterium tuberculosis. This led to the development of this polygotyping technique that is still used nowadays and also has been applied to other organisms, mainly path uh, pathogenic uh, bacteria. Also, uh, t um, not related to functionality, but just uh, uh, due to the, the huge polymorphism of spaces between isolates of uh, a single species of uh, different uh, species or related species of, of bacteria and prokaryotes, uh, CRISPR has been applied for uh, microbial ecology studies, for instance, to identify which viruses infect which uh, bacteria or which prokaryote in general. You only have to look for spaces matching a sequence in one virus. In that case, uh, uh, you can be uh, probably uh, not, not, not sure, but uh, the probability that this virus infect that, uh, that uh, host is, is high. Also, you can uh, look for uh, or analyze how changes the, the uh, population or the identity of spacers in, uh, in an environment over time or compare different environments in different places and see uh, how uh, changes this, uh, this uh, uh, panel or set of spacers over time and space. And this is quite useful for ecological studies and for uh, studies related to the coevolution of virus and host in natural environments, comparing how protospacers change and how spacers change in time. So, of course, uh, in already in 1997, uh, uh, sorry, <laughs> 2007, these uh, this, uh, uh, systems were used to generate uh, strains of streptococcus that are resistant to infection by, by viruses. This is quite important for biotechnological processes where bacteria are involving. And also, you can target, for instance, plasmids, um, for example, to uh, prevent the dissemination of uh, antibiotic resistant uh, genes that, as you probably know, are frequently transferred, or horizontally transferred through these uh, plasmid molecules. Uh, this is in the natural host, but you can just manipulate the, the CRISPR array, introduce new spacers, targeting these uh, uh, mobile genetic elements. But also, you can uh, uh, transfer this system to an heterologous host. And uh, uh, for this purpose, is it better suits, the, of course, the, the class two systems because you only need uh, one protein, the Cas9, in, in the case of the type two systems, and a guide, and that's it. And the, the ladies who uh, described this, uh, the, these elements that were necessary f uh, to achieve this uh, programmable uh, RNA guide uh, restriction systems were Jennifer Daunay and Emmanuel Charpentier in 2012. They uh, uh, working with the Streptococcus pyogenes SF370 system, the type 2 system, they identify as necessary and sufficient for this, uh, this uh, application uh, the, the, the three three components, the Cas9 protein, the CRISPR RNA molecule, and the tracer RNA molecule.
molecule. And also they prove that uh, you can combine these two RNA molecules in, in a single one. And you only need uh, 20 nucleotides of sequence to recognize a complementary region, and in that case you will get a cleavage at a fixed distance from the palm motif. So this, this was fa fantastic, and uh, was even more fantastic that they uh, pr uh, proposed that this could be used for RNA programmable genome editing. This is uh, probably the, the beginning, I'm sure, of that, the, the beginning of the CRISPR-Cas9 technology. And uh, 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 the result is something like that. <laughs> so this is a, a very, uh, not sad, because uh, uh, science is never sad, but uh, uncertain, uncertain period of time. And uh, this is a fantastic time now. After 2012, uh, situation really changed a lot. Uh, thanks to applications derived from this uh, basic research for many years. Uh, applications in prokaryotes, in, in heterogeneous hosts, this is a, a very nice application, a very nice possibility. So instead of uh, programming this CRISPR Cas system against the invaders, you can program it against a sequence in the, in the chromosome of a bacteria. You can deliver this system to a mixed population of E. coli. And you program the system to target the uh, the Shiga toxin. So this this system will kill only those pathogenic E. coli carrying the the, the Shiga toxin gene, but not our commensal uh, E. coli. So you can develop uh, 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 antimicrobials that are sequence specific just to kill the bad boys. And also has been applied this system uh, in heterolo hosts to uh, edit the chromosome of, pro of prokaryotes, just to select in uh, muta mutagenesis hoa mutagenesis <laughs> experiments uh, uh, those that have uh, undergone a change in a sequence that is initially targeted by a CRISPR-Cas system. Only those. Uh, uh, cells that uh, have uh, changed that sequence uh, uh, using the, the template you provide the cell with uh, will survive uh, to the induction of this system in the bacteria. And then also the, the system can be uh, shuttled to eukaryotic cells for many different applications, as you know. You can shuttle uh, just the, the Cas9 protein or on the, the, the CRISPR, the guides, RNA, so the, the, the DNA encoding the system, so the RNAs. Initially, the, 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 the guide RNA and the Cas9 protein were uh, used as uh, Emanuela and, and Jennifer described, but after that, uh, many people uh, changed these, uh, these components. First, the, 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 the guide RNA uh, to increase the versatility of the, the Cas9 functionality instead of SP. Cas9, this is the Streptococcus pyogenes, Cas9, that uh, still nowadays many people use, the vast majority of people is using this uh, native uh, 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 protein. Uh, many mutants have been developed from this uh, native Cas9 uh, to increase the plasticity of uh, palm recognition. So instead of recognizing only GG uh, as a palm, they can recognize others that uh, is, uh, is a, a good. Uh, uh, increase in, in this uh, versatility and decrease the, the bias of uh, Cas9 recognition of sequences. Also, this is a, a very nice improvement of this uh, native Cas9 protein because, as you know, one of the problems, especially in genome editing, is uh, the possibility of off targets. And indeed, uh, the, the system will recognize a sequence that is uh, complementary to the spacer, but uh, uh, it tolerates some mismatches, and that means that uh, off-targets can appear, but uh, uh, with this uh, mut uh, mutant of Cas9, there are not uh, tolerance, there are not mismatch, there is not uh, any mismatch tolerance at all. So, and, and in fact, the, the activity of Cas9 uh, doesn't decrease much compared to the native one. 
another uh, mutant derived from the sp cas 9 is the dead cas 9 protein. There are others like uh, Nike, Nikes, where instead of two nuclease activities, has just one nuclease activity and produce Nikes ins instead of tablet strand breaks. And this is another one, this is the dead, dead cas 9 that uh, which is uh, devoid of any uh, nuclease activity. It's not cleaving at all, but it's even more useful that uh, than the, 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 the native protein, the, the active nuclease protein. Or uh, Cas9 variants, uh, apart from that, from Streptococcus pyogenes, have also been applied. Some of them are uh, smaller than the, the Streptococcus pyogenes uh, uh, Cas9 protein, which, which is quite interesting for for the delivery of these uh, systems in a host, and they, they work just fine in, uh, for many applications. One of these applications is genome editing in eukaryotes, and probably uh, you know, and uh, uh, Bruce will talk about that, I, I, I guess, uh, 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 the genome editing uh, uh, is uh, the, the consequence not of the, the cleavage of the Cas9 protein itself, but of the repair after that cleavage. Because what Cas9 does is just cleave, and that's it. At a fixed distance from the palm, a double strand break. And after that, the repair systems of the host will try to repair that, and as a consequence, you will get uh, knockouts, not knock-ins or corrections of, of that gene, depending on the, if you provide or not uh, with a template, and depending on the, on the uh, uh, repair system that is involved in this uh, repair, non-homologous engineering or homology directed repair system. With uh, uh, CRISPR-Cas9, you, you have uh, the possibility of uh, introducing in one cell uh, a single uh, RNA guide or many different RNA guides. So you can perform multiplexing. And also, you can, uh, with uh, uh, different uh, guide RNAs, you can generate uh, rearrangement, inversions, translocations, large, large uh, deletions, and also large uh, insertions. But also, you can edit the uh, genome of a eukaryotic organism uh, relying not in, 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 in double strand breaks, mm -hmm. um, breaks but with uh, the, the dead Cas9. The dead Cas9 fused to this uh, citidine deaminase can be uh, applied to uh, replace GCs with ATs. Uh, these Cs are converted to uh, uridines, and after uh, DNA replication or repair, you get ATs, where you have uh, uh, GCs. <coughs> so this is what is uh, going on in, in, in the uh, genome editing field. Uh, so uh, many people that was working with uh, alternatives to genome editing, such as Talen or Simfinger, are moving to CRISPR. And uh, I, uh, last week, today is Saturday. No, so this week, <laughs> uh, uh, someone was t uh, talking about this behavior, and they, uh, he said that it's not just that people working with Talen or Singer, Simfinger came to CRISPR is because thanks to the easy of use, the, the, the low price of uh, this system, many people that uh, never even think about doing uh, genome editing is now doing genome editing. And of course, they have decided to use the, 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 the easiest way to do that, that is CRISPR. So uh, with CRISPR, many organisms have been modified, uh, the, the genome of many orga organisms, uh, from uh, bacteria to plants and, of course, to uh, animals, uh, including uh, small and very big animals, uh, such as pigs of non-human primates and also humans, both uh, in uh, editing somatic cells or uh, cells of the uh, germ line, generating embryos modified with CRISPR or CRISPRized. <coughs> Uh, many uh, genes uh, related to disease have been identified with CRISPR and replaced and removed or modified or corrected. Uh, uh, this, uh, this has been applied, uh, as I said, to, uh, to uh, isolated cells, but, but also to organisms after injection of a CRISPR gas system in old animals. Uh, some uh, diseases have been ameliorated. This is, these are some examples. 
is, uh, of course, are cases of uh, uh, gene therapy in, in adult animals. And in the case of uh, uh, humans, uh, as probably you know, uh, this, these experiments are now uh, on their way. They, they are now trying to uh, treat lung cancer with uh, T cells modified with CRISPR. So anyway, uh, CRISPR are for sure a very good uh, genome editing tool, but uh, you can also uh, harvest uh, these uh, systems for non-editing applications. Here you have uh, just a few examples uh, that uh, most of them are related to the use of uh, the dead Cas9 protein that can be used, uh, fused to, for instance, epigenetic modifiers to methylate DNA, to acetylate histones, and also uh, Cas9 can be, uh, dead Cas9 can be uh, uh, coupled with uh, transcriptional activators or repressors, or to these uh, fluorescent proteins. Uh, this is uh, not related, in fact, uh, directly to, to this image, because you can fuse this, this dead Cas9 to a fluorescent protein, but in this case, you fuse or you bind fluorescent proteins not to the dead Cas9, but to the guide RNA. Uh, so this, uh, uh, these guide RNAs uh, have, have been linked to aptamers, and these aptamers can be bound to different proteins, so you can combine uh, these, uh, these uh, different uh, proteins with different colors to see up, up to six different loci at the same time in a, in a, in a cell in vivo um, uh, monitorize this, uh, the movement of these different loci and in real time. Okay, all the time talking about Cas9, uh, but however, uh, like I said before, this, uh, this, uh, all the class two systems rely on just a single protein for interference. And this is not only a system, a type two system in class two, there are other systems. This is an example, type five systems, uh, A and B, type six systems, all of them are class two systems. And the proteins involved in the interference, the recognition of the target and interference and uh, cleavage of the, of the target are different from Cas9. CPF1, instead of double strand breaks at the same level, that means uh, instead of generating blunt ends, generate staggered ends. And uh, instead of close to the palm, it's uh, in a distal part of the palm. And th uh, this, this uh, protein uh, doesn't need any tracer RNA, so the guide RNA is, is uh, smaller. And this is, uh, uh, some people is showing now that CPF1 works even better than uh, the, the Cas9 protein, at least in some cases, uh, mainly in plants. <coughs> there are also other, other uh, proteins uh, analogous to Cas9 that differ in, in, in important uh, features uh, from uh, Cas9, and the, the most recently uh, characterized, the C2, C2, that cleaves, recognize and cleave cleaves uh, RNA instead of uh, DNA. So anyway, this, this is just the consequence of the study of uh, CRISPR-Cas systems in microorganisms that the macrobiologists have been able to cultivate. But there are, as you probably know, much, much more uh, microorganisms <coughs> that have not been cultivated, have not been isolated, and we don't know almost anything about them. And this is 99.9% .9 of microorganisms in the world. So if you look at this paper, Pierre, just a month ago, uh, uh, they have analyzed uh, metagenomes uh, from uh, natural samples. Uh, they have analyzed uh, uncultivated uh, microbes, and they have found something that had never been described before, that is Cas9 in archaea. All Cas9, all, all type 2 systems have been identified in bacteria so far. And they have found a, a canonical Cas9 in archaea and is quite different from the one we are using now, which is smaller, which is quite, quite useful. And also they identify two more proteins, Cas Y and Cas X, 
that are uh, uh, also type 2 systems, probably type 2 systems, uh, for sure class 2 systems that are also uh, smaller and, and they, they are not characterized at all, so probably they have many uh, features that differ from that of the uh, known Cas9 proteins. Yet in uh, uh, the class 1 uh, involves uh, systems that require complexes uh, instead of a single protein for interference state. Uh, anyway, they have been applied also in bacteria for genome editing. These are uh, strong bias just to have to manage these four, six, seven, eight different proteins in heterologous host. But uh, quite recently, uh, this group uh, has uh, simplified this, uh, this complex instead of all these proteins, they have shown that you can uh, uh, achieve some uh, efficient uh, cleavage and interference with only uh, these components. So they have reduced not only the length of the guide RNA, but also the complexity of the complex to achieve uh, uh, these uh, uh, applications, as at least in, in genome editing, perhaps. And this is in bacteria. Uh, in, in viruses, they are also CRISPR-Cas systems. As far as we know, only uh, have been identified in a, a virus of bacteria, Vibrio cholera, and also in Mimi viruses. Mimi viruses are giant viruses that infect eukaryotic cells. And these um, uh, giant viruses are infected by viruses. So they have a, a, what I call a, a Cas-like rather than, than a CRISPR-like system. They have uh, uh, proteins that are analogous to the Cas proteins of the, the bacteria, and it behaves as an immunity system against viruses, viruses uh, a, a viral system against other viruses. And we don't know anything about this, uh, this system, just that it works as an immune system. So um, you, you expect that systems, CRISPR-Cas systems in viruses would be uh, more simple, more streamlined, so more uh, uh, perfect, to say, for, for uh, applications in heterologous host. And as I said, we don't know almost anything about them. So this is my feeling about the CRISPR uh, systems. I used to say a, a few years ago that CRISPR are like a, a Swiss uh, knife. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, not a normal Swiss, uh, uh, Swiss knife. This is like uh, a, a powerful toolbox with uh, many different uh, CRISPR-Cas variants. So it's for sure is that uh, after many years of basic research, we, we got to a situation where we develop some uh, tools that have many applications, but uh, as I remember in 2010 or something like that, 10 or 11 probably, we had a CRISPR beating and uh, we of course only have this, this information and uh, we were not sure whether we were at the uh, log phase of growth, eh? uh, uh, talking about the, the, the growth curve of uh, prokaryotes, of prokaryotic cultures, we were not sure whether we were at the log phase or we were just at the end. We were, of course, not at the end. We were at the lag phase, just the beginning of this growth curve. And also, we can say now that this is not the end, of course, of CRISPR, of the CRISPR field. Uh, there is a lot of work to do, and uh, just. Uh, uh, take home message for you, uh, I, I recommend always to take risks, always. It's, it's good to be sure about uh, the possibility of getting results, but in parallel, please, uh, risk a lot. Uh, you, will, you will get a, a, a fantastic reward, for sure. It's, it's really worthwhile trying something that uh, no one expects and no one believes in that. Mm. Sometimes uh, you get surprises. So uh, I would like to thank my collaborators at the University of, of Alicante and also in other universities, and of course the people that pay uh, some research, uh, uh, try to keep us uh, working almost every day. <laughs> thank you. Thank you.
Thank you. We have time just for a couple of questions if uh, you want to do it now. We will have a round table at the very end, so they will all the speakers will be there. Discussions will be obviously open. So if any of you want to just to do uh, to make any questions just now, uh, that's the time. So I have one question about uh, how this happens in bacteria because I have knowledge about CRISPR about, uh, as a tool rather than in the host. Uh, so how this gets ensembled? How, uh, what triggers the, the transcription of uh, the different cas proteins and after, or it's uh, something that the bacteria has already ensembled and when the virus uh, comes, mm. uh, it, it's prepared to kind of attack. Okay. So. The answer is related to the huge diversity of CRISPR-Cas systems, of hosts, and the diversity of prokaryotes themselves. So depending on the, the, the host you see, uh, you look at, the, for instance, the extremophiles, they have many systems, many CRISPR-Cas systems, not just one, they have a diversity of CRISPR-Cas systems in the same host, and uh, some of them are all the time active, they are constitutives, or they are induced when a virus infects the cell, or they just are induced when the, the envelope is, is suffering any damage. Uh, other systems, for instance those of uh, E. coli, are just uh, sleeping all the time. <laughs> so that's uh, it's, it's, it's very uh, annoying. It's we were working with E. coli for many years, we were convinced that th this was an immune system and, and we never were able to prove that because it's, it's uh, repressed, it's, it's silenced. And we still don't know after 15 years, something like that, in which natural conditions the, the, the system is induced. So that depends on the, the system and depends on the host. You know, in thermos, for instance, uh, has four or five different CRISPR-Cas systems, and one of them is induced by a particular type of uh, viruses, others are, are not. So that depends. And if there is a um, degradation turnover once it has done the job. Yeah, we, we, we know for sure it's the, the, the pre-CRISPR RNA, the RNA that derived from the CRISPR array, is, has a very short living uh, time. So it's immediately, uh, if it's not processed into the CRISPR RNA, it's immediately degraded, it disappears immediately. Uh, the, the I don't know about the, the time of the proteins. But uh, the thing is that we, we have a system that is quite good to defend cells against invaders. But uh, it's also a big risk of taking pieces of DNA during adaptation from the own chromosome, and that the consequence if is that uh, the, the cell will uh, commit suicide, will kill itself, uh, autoimmunity. So this, is, uh, this explains why not uh, all CRISPR-Cas systems are on all the time. Only in, in very peculiar circumstances is, is really worthwhile to induce that system under the risk of killing uh, the, the, the own cell. And we know that some systems behave uh, uh, an as an immune system not because it clips the invader, but because it clips the, the, the chromosome of the host, preventing dissemination of the virus in the population. Uh, also, the, there are uh, many other uh, roles, as I said before, not related to, to cleavage itself. Because uh, one spacer, when recognize a matching sequence, a perfectly matching sequence, clips. But when it's just a bit similar, uh, sometimes instead of uh, cleavage and degradation, just produce one nick and induce the uh, repair system of bacteria, the SOS OS system. And that uh, means that uh, uh, proteases will be activated, uh, will uh, degrade uh, some proteins, probably those that are uh, inhibiting the, the light uh, lysis uh, by, by viruses that are inserted, integrated in the genome, and things like that. And we also know that they, they are involved in the development of uh, Mixococcus antus, for instance, for the formation of fruiting bodies and, and many other roles. So we can uh, generalize about CRISPR-Cas systems. And we, we, there are many things that we don't know yet, fortunately. <laughs> Thank you very much for the nice talk and the very comprehensive. And oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, I am amazed with the fact that uh, there is cat-like uh, 
system and viruses. Yeah. What's your opinion about how these viruses acquired this yeah. system? Okay. Did they steal it from a bacteria they infected? Okay. Or is it a parallel evolution that these big viruses or the giant viruses? The giant viruses. Yeah, some people say that giant, giant viruses are a small bacteria, <laughs> so, so it probably they, they have large uh, chromosomes, and probably the origin, uh, I mean, CRISPR systems are in archaea and bacteria. You look at the uh, phylogenetic tree, it's clear that uh, this system was invented uh, probably uh, 4,000 million years ago. Um, before the, the, the eukaryotic cell. And also you, you get CRISPR in mitochondria or with Jafaba, what means that was already there also. So it's, uh, it means they, they, w they were invented a long time ago. And uh, the thing is why the eukaryotic cells uh, lost it, because probably it was in eukaryotic cells. It was probably was not uh, a good business for eukaryotic cells to have this possibility of autoimmunity, but uh, who knows. Uh, so the, the origin is, uh, is uh, very ancestral. Okay, so thank you very much. Welcome. I have a couple of breaks now. So the people from the organization will just direct you upstairs, which is uh, the nucleus, where we will have the coffee. And then we have half an hour, I think it's in the program. Mm.